Okay. No. No. Can we stand? Why don't we just lift our hands and love the Lord? Invite his presence into the remainder of our service. God, we love you. We thank you, God, for your many blessings. We appreciate the fact that we can worship you today. We love you, God. Thank the Lord. God's good, isn't he? We want to get into the word of the Lord. I know you're full. And I also know sometimes it's hard to keep the attention of somebody that's full. So <laughs> I won't hold you too long. But I want to turn our attention, first of all, to 2 Chronicles chapter 13. And I want to begin reading with verse 5, and we'll read down through verse uh, 10. Ought ye know, or ought ye not to know, that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom of Israel to David forever, even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt. Yet Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon, the son of David, is risen up and hath rebelled against his Lord. And there are gathered unto him vain men, the children of Beliah, and have strengthened themselves against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, when Rehoboam was young and tender-hearted and could not withstand them. And now you think to withstand the kingdom of the Lord in the hand of the sons of David, and ye be a great multitude and there are with you golden calves, which Jeroboam made you for gods. Have you not cast out the priest of the Lord, the sons of Aaron and the Levites, and have made you priest after the manner of the nations of other lands, so that whatsoever cometh to consecrate himself with a young bullock and seven rams, the same may be a priest of them, that are no gods. But as for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not forsaken him. And the priests which minister unto the Lord are the sons of Aaron. The Levites wait upon their business. I want to go back to verse 5 and read that verse again. He said, Ought you not to know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever, even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt. By a covenant of salt. You may be seated. <clears throat> This is what I want to at least attempt to teach about for a few minutes tonight. I want to talk about a covenant of salt. A covenant of salt. In the book of Romans chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2, the Bible said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, 
but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I believe that it is the will of God for you and I to put salt, the salt of total commitment in our living sacrifice. I want to say that again. I believe that it is the will of God for you and I to put the salt of total commitment in our living sacrifice. The ancient Hebrew people said that a salt covenant meant to bind oneself to another in utmost loyalty and truthfulness, even suffering death rather than to break that covenant. And the Bible said the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom of Israel to David forever, even to him and his sons by a covenant of salt. When you and I obeyed Acts 2.38, when we repented of our sins, when we were baptized in Jesus' name, when we received the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, we entered into a covenant of perpetual obligation. And that means if you and I will keep God's commandments, he will never leave us or forsake us. And he will go with us even unto the end of the world. The word salt is mentioned 31 times in the Old Testament and 10 times in the New Testament. And this unusual mineral has the ability to ward off decay. You know why some people backslide? You know why their relationship between them and God begins to decay? It's because that covenant of salt that binds them to God and His commandments and to the church and to God's people, it reaches a place that it's no longer as important as it used to be. Brother Royer and I were talking some time ago and he was talking about the fact that, and I was talking about the fact that it seems like to us. Now, if you don't agree with us, we understand, but it seems like to us 50 years ago when I began preaching that people seem to have more of a commitment to the house of God and the things of God. And Brother Royer was telling me he was talking to the younger man that became pastor in Carrollton and he said, Brother Royer, you know why that seems to be true? It's because our generation, church and the things of God are just one of the things that's important to us in our lives. But the Bible said, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, my good pastor that pastored in Bonwyer for 33 years told me, he said, you need to develop a relationship with God, a strong relationship with God, and then everything else comes second. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. See, when you enter into a covenant of salt, it is a covenant of commitment, a covenant of loyalty, a covenant that will not be broken. When they enter into a covenant of salt, they would rather die than break that covenant. And the author of 2 Corinthians said that the Lord, or 2 Chronicles, that the Lord gave the kingdom of Israel to David and his sons by a covenant of of salt and that covenant will be an eternal covenant because when we get to heaven the only king of kings and lord of lords that we're going to see is Jesus Christ and he is a descendant of David amen. can you say amen? amen 
So <clears throat> it wards off decay. Salt is a preservative. It preserves things. Amen. How many has had the Holy Ghost over 25 years? Raise your hand. Well, I promise you this. If you're here and you've been serving God over 25 years, there are some things that you have done to preserve your relationship with God. You've entered into that salt covenant. <laughs> Praise God. All right. And uh, salt has a way of healing diseases. Amen. Pouring salt in things may be painful at some time, but it has a way of killing bacteria. It has a way of healing things. And uh, when we enter into a salt covenant with the Lord, there's a lot of things that begin to heal in our lives. Amen. Amen. The Bible said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. And many of us are not the same people that came to an altar of repentance when we first received the Holy Ghost. There has been a healing physically, psychologically, spiritually, and emotionally. That is what a salt covenant can do for you. Amen. 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 Salt enhances the flavor of almost anything. And uh, my mother-in-law believed in salt. I promise you she, just, she could eat it in a spoon. And everything she cooked had plenty salt in it. And you, and you know you can get things too salty I guess. But it doesn't taste very good if it doesn't have any salt. Salt will enhance the flavor of just about anything. And you know what? When we enter into a salt covenant with the Lord, it just makes us a better person. It gives us a better life. It makes us happier people. Praise God. How many glad you got the Holy Ghost today? Amen. But remember, the salt covenant is a covenant of commitment and loyalty. Amen. You know... I may not should say this, but you know how we preachers are. Sometimes we say it anyway. But, uh, you know, it seems like many young people today that are getting married, they go to the church and before the preacher thinking, you know, if this don't work, it, work out, I'll just find somebody else. And uh, uh, they forget about the vows that they make. But if you stay married, you've got to work on it. There has to be commitment. Amen. And, uh, you know, uh, I was picking at my wife today and, and I was studying this very Bible study sitting in my recliner and I needed a red pen. I asked my wife, I said, do you have a red pen? She said, no. And I sat there a while and I got up and I said, I'll go get a red pen. And then I'll write my name on your foot. <laughs> and she said, you do. And I'll wear those red sandals and show everybody. Your name. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I better not do that. But uh, <clears throat> you have to be committed to one another, to stay with one another. Amen. And uh, to stay in the church You've got to be a part of a covenant of salt. Yes, I ran across this. It says that sea salt will even limit the bad effects of radiation. I don't know that to be a fact. That's what I've, I've read. Said it will actually limit the bad effects of radiation. And this coven of salt that you and I have entered into with the Lord, it has the ability to limit the effects of all life's tragedies and unpleasant situations. 
Now, I didn't say we would never encounter or experience unpleasant things. I didn't say that we would never experience a tragedy. But what I am saying is, when you have God, when you have entered into this salt covenant, it limits the effects of the tragedy and the unpleasant things. Amen. I thought about Brother Randall and the beautiful service we had here. And it was a, a, an unusual funeral service. But you know what? Now the adjustment comes. Now you have to understand how it is to live by yourself. But you know what? This, call, this covenant of salt, it limits the ability of the powers of hell and tragedies to affect our lives. I believe the best thing that ever happened to you and I was when we repented of our sins and God filled us with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And we entered into this spiritual salt covenant. And now here we are with the Holy Ghost worshiping the Lord. Why don't we do that again? God, we love you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Like the salt that preserves things, this salt covenant has a way of preserving us. It has a way of healing us. It will ward off spiritual decay. If you just think about that commitment that you've made with the Lord. And this Salt covenant will enhance the flavor that you have with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, people don't, out there in the world, even religious people, they may not understand why that we want to go to church so much. <laughs> why that we like to have revivals and count meetings and, and youth rallies and youth camps. It's because of that salt covenant that enhances our relationship with the Lord. It's more than just coming to church. We've been baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We spoke in tongues as the Spirit of God give the utterance and it enhances our belief in God. It enhances our relationship with Him. It makes us want to pray. It makes us want to worship. It makes us want to sing amazing grace. Thank God for that covenant that we have made with the Lord. Because of this covenant, God will go with us even unto the end of the world. Now, if you'll notice, we're talking about David, that when <clears throat> he came down to bring his brothers some food and he saw the giant that was challenging the armies of Israel, he said, I'll go out there and fight him. And the Bible said the thing that I've always looked at when he went out to meet the giant, he ran toward the giant. And he only had a sling and a shepherd's staff. And the giant laughed at him. But you know why he was so confident? Two things. He had entered into two covenants. One was Abrahamic covenant because he said who does this uncircumcised Philistine think he is this was an allusion to the fact that he had entered into the covenant of circumcision with Abraham and then too he had entered into that salt covenant with God therefore he knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that he would gain the victory over the giant have you ever got up one morning and went downtown and came face to face to a, with a giant? Or you got up and you went to the job and you came face to face with a giant? You went to the post office and you came face to face with a giant? You know, there's just something about it when you've entered into that covenant of salt. It enhances everything. And 
It'll help you be an overcomer. Have anybody ever, have you ever had to overcome yourself? Anybody? Let's be honest about it. You know, the other day I had to do some repenting because I was downtown and uh, somebody had texted me. And I'm trying to do right. I didn't want to try to answer the text while I was driving down the road. So I come up to the square there and there was a light. It was red, two or three cars in front of me. I said, okay, while I'm stopped here, I'll, I'll answer that text. Well, immediately somebody started blowing their horn behind me. And uh, I said, okay, okay, you know. And I started driving away and he just kept blowing his horn. That bothers me. <laughs> and so he just kept blowing his horn, blowing his horn. So I pulled over and I, come on up here. We're going to have a conversation. <laughs> and we did. He pulled up, rolled down the window. You know what he said? Turn to somebody and say, what did he say? You know what he said? Anybody want to know what he said? He said, sir, the hatch on the back of your vehicle is open. <laughs> and I, I had it full of groceries. It's a wonder any of it was left. So then I had to repent. <laughs> That's what the covenant of salt would do. <laughs> It'll help you overcome yourself. Amen. And so, thank God for the fact that we could repent and get right with God and let the salt enhance the flavor of our relationship with the Lord. All right. When we have salt between us and God, God will help us through the deep, dark valleys that we have to walk through. Even today in the Arab countries in the Middle East, they have an expression that they use when two people enter into a, an agreement. They say, there's salt between us. And I've entered into an agreement with the Lord Jesus. He said, if you'll serve me, I'll minister to your needs regardless. If you'll serve me, I'll be whatever you need me to be. And you know, Job found that out. Every now and then, I just go back to the first chapter of the book of Job and I read it all over again about a man that God pointed out to the enemy. Amen. I know you've heard me say this before. I want to say it one more time. God, don't point me out to the devil. I got enough problem with him as it is. It is. But he pointed him out. <laughs> when the sons of God appeared before the Lord, the devil came to and the Lord looked at the devil and said, have you considered my servant Job? He said, I know all about Job. The powers of hell know all about us. They know there's a church like this in Jasper. They know there's a group of people in Jasper that come here and worship and attempts to worship in spirit and truth. The powers of hell know what kind of pastor you have. And he would like to limit the ability of this church to function in the kingdom of God as God wants it to function. That's why everything, that's why everything has happened like it's happened in the last few months. There's an enemy out there that don't want this church to have revival. They don't want the miraculous to take place in this church. But it's going to happen anyway because there's some people that have entered into a covenant of salt. So the Lord said, well, what do you think about Job? He said, well, the only reason that he is, is serving you is because you've blessed him so much materially. And if you take that away, he will not serve you. 
And the Lord said, okay, I'm going to allow you to take away his wealth. And it's a long story. I won't go into it all, but you know what happened. He lost his cattle, lost his oxen, lost his donkeys, lost his camels, his sheep. The thing that always puzzled me is when that servant, that one servant came and said, I hate to tell you this, Job, but the fire of God has fell out of heaven and destroyed all the sheep. You talk about a man that was about to be tested, but he stood. And you know why? He entered into a salt covenant with his God. What is a salt covenant? It's when you commit to God and you're loyal and you're true and you've got such a commitment you would rather die than break that commitment. Praise God. How many times as a child when I rode through the community of Bonware on my bicycle, Brother Hall, and I could hear prayer meetings going on on both sides of the road. People praying through. And so he lost it all. And his wife said, what's wrong with you? <laughs> He just kept on serving the Lord. Amen. And his wife said, curse God and die. But he did not ever give up. Even when he lost his sons and daughters, he did not give up. Kept right on serving the Lord. Why? It's because of that special kind of covenant. And the thing about it is, church, we need to think about this. Job will stand in judgment right along beside of us. And he didn't have the Holy Ghost. He didn't have that comforter. But yet he was faithful to the Lord. I remember listening to Brother Billy Cole uh, preach one time at Because of the Times. And he said he never will forget. He had an older sister and uh, she was very ill. And they were praying and praying and praying. And uh, his dad went up to the room where she was sick and she had just passed away. And uh, he said when his father came down, he looked at the rest of the family, Brother Billy Cole and the other family, and he said, God never makes a mistake. Never. Amen. And so we've just got to be faithful with our minds made up. I'm not going to allow anything to separate me from the love of God. Paul was beaten, stoned, left for dead in the streets, rejected of his family, arrested in, in Rome and put in jail. They turned him loose for a little while, then they arrested him again, and this time they executed him. But before he died, he wrote to his son in the gospel, Timothy. He said, I fought a good fight. They beat me and they put 39 stripes on my back more than once. But I continued to preach. I continued to serve God. They stoned me. They arrested me. They put me in jail. But I still was faithful to God. Why? It was that salt covenant. Amen. How much do we love the Lord? Have we got a mind made up? We're going to serve Him anyway. Regardless of what happens in our lives. Amen. I'm going to read this and I'm going to close this. I received some strong hints before I got up here not to preach too long. So I'm turning to Acts chapter 12. Here's some people that had entered into a salt covenant. Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. He killed James the brother of John with a sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews he proceeded further to take Peter also then were the days of the unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him he put him in prison 
and delivered him to four continuance of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. He really intended on doing to the apostle Peter what he did to uh, James. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church and the God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers from the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. Why? It was because of that covenant of salt. When he needed him most, God sent the angel. And a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter in the side, raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city. I, I like this, which opened to them of its own accord. You see, when you enter into that salt covenant, doors will open that God will open. Which opened to them of its own accord, and they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Thank God he's on our side. And we're on his side. This New Testament covenant can be considered a spiritual salt covenant. I do believe, I really do believe there's people sitting on the sound of my voice. You would die before you broke this covenant. You would die before you forsook the Lord and walk back into the world because that's how much you love him. Praise God. How many are thankful for the Holy Ghost? Let's stand, lift our hands and love the Lord. God, we thank you for the Holy Ghost. We appreciate your goodness and your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen.